Let's go through another example where we take this data set and divide it into sections. We will also examine the effect of adding in the ability to edit future periods. In Training Land, we can see an example of the data set separated into separate sections. We can also see that the order of the data elements now follows the same order as the paper form. When we earlier created the default form, the order of the data elements was determined by DHIS2, and it simply followed an alphabetical order. By creating a section-based data set, we can both arrange the individual sections within the form, as well as the order of the data elements within these individual sections. Let's go back to the system that we originally created the data set and modify the data set so it has two sections and it is arranged in an order that more closely reflects the paper-based form. We're now back in the system where we created our original default data set. I'm back in the dataset management application. In this case, I want to separate it into two sections, fever and diarrhea. I also want the order of the form to be similar to that of the paper form. We can do this by clicking on the Actions button next to the dataset. Then we select Manage Sections. The next step is to add a new section. We can do this by hitting the plus icon located in the bottom corner. Let's give the section a name. We'll start by adding in the section for fever. We can give it a code and a description if required. As in our other examples, don't worry about the category combination field, as we won't be working with that field for the moment. The next thing we can do is add in our data elements. We'll add in the data elements that belong to the fever section. We've added those data elements in, but we want to arrange them in the order that they appear within the paper form. In order for this to be reflected in this particular section, we should swap prolonged fever and influenza-like illness. If we click on prolonged fever, we can use the up arrow to move this data element upwards in the order within this section. On the form itself, this order of data elements will be reflected in my data entry page. After we have defined these parameters, we can click on Save. Let's add in the second section. We'll click on the plus icon. We'll give the section a name. And we'll add in the two data elements. On the form, watery diarrhea appears before bloody diarrhea. So we'll just move that up. Now that we've defined the section name, as well as the data elements that belong to this section, we can click on Save. By adding in these sections, we have created a section-based dataset. Let's just modify some parameters of the dataset itself to allow us to enter data for future periods and examine the effect this has on data entry. I'll click on Dataset. I'll click on Actions beside the dataset name, and then click on Edit. We currently see that we can enter this dataset through a weekly period. Currently, the Open Future Periods for data entry is set to zero. This means that we can only enter data when a week has been completed. Let's examine the effect of adding in additional future periods. For example, I'll remove the zero here, and I will change this to five. In theory, this should allow me to enter data up to five weeks ahead of the current period. Let's click on Save to save that change. Because I've added in those two sections and changed some properties of the dataset, I'm going to go ahead and clear the cache. 
We'll do this by accessing the browser cache cleaner. Anytime that we make edits within DHIS2, for example, adding in sections or changing properties to a certain object like a data set or a data element, it's always a good idea to clear the cache. I'll select all and click on clear. This will remove any locally stored data within DHIS2. Let's go back to data entry. We'll select an organization unit at the facility level, select our data set, and select our period. After we've selected those parameters, we can see that the data set appears according to the sections and the order of data elements that I have defined in data set maintenance. By using section forms, we can easily divide our forms into sections and order them as required. We can also have a look at the periods for data entry that are available. In the previous example, we could only enter data up to week 46. However, we have now defined the open future periods for data entry as 5. We can see we can now enter 5 weeks ahead of week 46, up to week 51. When we went through the explanation of these fields earlier, we described an example referring to population data. That might be a typical use case in which we explore the use of future period data entry.